You are now into film. I see, mate. You're fond of me, lobster. Molly, you in danger, girl. Your ass looks like about 150 pounds of chew bubble gum piled. You know that? Say it, sir. I don't believe you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? Huh? Now answer my question. Were you rushing or were you dragging? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Film Co. My name is Phoenix Cloudin, and I am joined by the two greatest co-hosts in the world. Of course, we are here with my man, Zach. Zach, how are you, sir? Man, I'm doing great. I'm uh, down here in Florida right now. And uh, yeah, things are going good, man. Excited to be back and talk about the uh, 10 best and 10 worst movies from each of us. So yeah. Excited indeed. And I'm so sorry that you are in Florida. That's awful. Uh, anyway, <laughs> also he's, he's joining- a temporary, He's the temporary Florida man for the week. Yeah, right. So That's also true. also joining us, Brandon, sir, how are you? Man, I am good, Phoenix. It is good to be back. And like you mentioned, like like Zach mentioned, it's good to be talking about our 10 best and 10 worst of the year. It's crazy how just like this this past like few weeks have really saved this year, I feel like. Mm. Um, just there were a lot of stinkers this year. Uh, just a lot of stuff that had just been like just okay. Some great films and just some like that are that deserve just like to be down in the dumps, <laughs> never to be seen again. So I'm excited to dive into that. How are you doing, Phoenix? I'm great. And actually, I feel the the almost opposite of you. Like the the top half of the year was really the strongest for me. And I feel like it dwindled as it got towards the the end of the year. But uh, so, yeah, my list will probably reflect that. So uh, I'm so interested in what everyone has to say. But um, before we get into the best. Let's start with the worst. Let's let's just get the worst out of the way. Let's I have feel a, that band aid. Yeah, I, feel, I have a feeling we're gonna share a lot of similarities on this one, but uh, I'm still so excited to to hear what everyone has to say. I would just like to say I think mine are gonna be different because I've seen a lot more than you guys, and not in a great way either. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it, Zach. Why don't you kick us off? Yeah. So. I'm looking at my movies here, and my number 10 slot is going to have to go to Firestarter. You don't have to be afraid. Please. I can help you. Liar, liar. Pants on fire. Uh, that movie just missed the mark in so many ways. Um, I remember seeing the previews, thinking it was going to be, like, a cool kind of movie, maybe. And when I saw it, it was like the whole story was just so basic and bland, which is really unfortunate. I feel like they could have done so much more. It just turned out to not be such a great movie at all. That's upsetting. I, I, I did not see Firestarter just because I, I love Zac Efron and I hate to see him in a bad movie. So I waited for the reviews. And when the reviews were bad, I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to watch that. <laughs> For uh, for me, I have a before I dive into my my bottom ten, um, I'd like to bring up a dishonorable mention. That being Jurassic World Dominion, um, and <laughs> like the trailers gave this movie so much hope that this would be better than Fallen Kingdom, and it somehow turned out to be worse than Fallen Kingdom. Like if you if you guys are listening to this review or this or top ten, go over and listen to our Jurassic World Dominion review as we just absolutely ripped that movie to shreds. Um, it is very honor dishonorable of um being even just released. So yeah, but my number my uh out of the fifty three films I've seen, start coming in at number forty four, is you guys are gonna hate me. Bodies, bodies, bodies. Stop. Who wants to play bodies, bodies, bodies? So how do you play? If you draw the piece of paper that has the X on it, you are the murderer. Let's go. Cool. And if you're the murderer, you have to kill someone by touching them on the back. The most important part, if you come across a body, you have to yell, Body, body, body! Um, I just, we, listen, we, we've discussed it already. And yeah, my, my, my thoughts on it increased 
from the last time like we talked like when we talked about it my like my my thoughts on the film went up a bit but still i think it just stays where it is as far as just my likability of it so num- number 44 or 53 is bodies 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 <laughs> Oh man, I am more shocked that you have Jurassic World Dominion in your dishonorable mentions. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like that's just disrespectful. That movie's so bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's so see, so it, bad. it it just missed my bottom ten. I don't know how that's possible, but okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> wait till you hear the other films I've included. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> Zach, your your number ten was what again? Firestarter. Firestarter. Okay, no. Well, all right. Well, this, this, well, let me get my dishonorable mentions out of the way as well. Uh, I have, <laughs> I have two. Um, the first okay. one is Armageddon Time. I don't know if you guys got around to seeing that. Uh, James Gray's sort of semi autobiographical film was not a great time at the movies. It was really rather bland. It was a, a shame because it had such a talented cast. And Hathaway, Jeremy Strong, Anthony Hopkins really should have been a really great movie. Just yeah. really underwritten, very, very just bland of a film. The other one that honestly just missed my my top 10 is a movie, and probably only because I love this actress, but it's the movie Men. Oh my god. Uh, oh, with Jesse Buckley. I love Jesse Buckley. I love everything she's ever done. She's fantastic. But god, this movie was awful. <laughs> like like it was really hard to sit through. Probably one of the worst movies I've seen this year. It just barely missed this list. Even now I'm contemplating maybe it should go on here because <laughs> even talking about it I'm like, "Oh god, I hated this movie." Um, but yeah, those are my dishonorable mentions. So the one movie, the my number ten, which got a, uh, which stole the spot from men, actually, is gonna be Uncharted. Everything in here. Why the map? This path that Ferdinand Magellan took to sail around the world. You know your history. It's the biggest treasure that's never been found. Five billion, easy. I think you're here because you're your brother. Well, you know my brother Sam. Uh, Ooh, I'm s- yeah. I'm sorry. I had nothing good to say about this movie i i love both mark Wahlberg and um tom holland they're great in other roles they were so poorly cast here it was such a bad idea to have young nathan drake who was basically peter parker it was it was all bad nothing about it matched the majesty of the game it didn't have a really strong story yeah, I, I didn't care at all for this. So this lands just barely number 10 on my worst of the year list. Yeah, um, I'm actually, I didn't say any dishonorable mentions. I'm going to go back and mention a, a couple here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go with Spiderhead. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was horrible. I was really hoping more from Chris Hem- Chris Hemsworth. And uh, my other dishonorable mention of the year is The Gray Man. Mm. I expected <laughs> so much more from that movie, and it was complete garbage. And both of those were very close to my bottom 10. And I have a list of 135. So, <laughs> um, but going back to the bottom 10, number nine is going to be Deep Water coming in with Ben Affleck. That is a crap movie. <laughs> I regretted every second of that. It's it's about a crappy situation and the whole story is just horrible. Like they're just it just I hated every minute of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with deep water. Nice. Um, I'd like to mention another dishonorable mention. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't do it before. Listen, listen, if you go back and listen to our review of Thor Love and Thunder, I was pretty positive on it. <laughs> But that is greatly worsened. Uh, so another dishonorable mention is Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, that movie had potential, and it 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 missed the mark so much. But um, coming in at my second, uh, oh, I, I don't know how to say this. My my 
nine, 40, 40. Yeah. My ninth 45 <laughs> out of 53. Um, this may have been Zach's this honorable mention, but this is on my list of bad movies. The gray man. Um, yeah. Like <laughs> it, it started off pretty good. They, they had like the Russo brothers have lost a lot of respect um just to look from their interviews and stuff how they just listen to their children on making executive decisions and all that and like <laughs> now they're gonna do a uh a movie with what was it hercules a tiktok and stuff oh, but yeah. um don't even get me started on that but um the gray man it had potential had some cool stuff but like over time like but they but they started using the cool stuff at like every chance they got in the movie so it got oversaturated so yeah, the gray man is at number nine for me. Yeah, we we watched that. We recorded a, a an episode on it. I think we were all pretty down on it. So yeah, fair to see. It it was uh it didn't make my bottom ten, however, just barely missed my bottom ten. Uh I, I we watched some crap this year, guys. Coming in at number nine on my list. I'm not even sure if you guys even heard of this movie, um, but I went and saw it again in theaters because I, I enjoy wasting money, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I saw The Invitation. Um, oh, yeah. I yeah. refuse to see that. I heard it sucks. <laughs> oh, it's so, so bad. Like, you if can you tell everything from the trailer. Yeah, I was going to say, if you saw the trailer, you saw the movie. There is literally nothing else besides what was in the trailer um and the the i love vampires so me personally i'm i'm gonna go out to see anything with vampires in it and i was really disappointed because the vampires don't show up till like the final 10 minutes of the movie um yeah it's it's not a great film it's a waste of a lot of good talent young talent uh guys uh, guys and girls i hope who get another shot um, it's a shame because I, I thought it had really great potential. It got hamstringed somewhere, whether it was in the editing process or the marketing the process, the writing process, whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. It got it got chewed to bits and it just it did not land. So for me, number nine, the invitation. Just a quick note on that. It's such a shame, too, because the production design is gorgeous. Right. And it, yeah, but it completely missed the mark on every other aspect. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. Coming in at number eight for me is going to be Dog with Channing Tatum. That's a movie I saw twice. And God, I wish I didn't. The first time I fell asleep and uh, I was like, you know, maybe I'm just tired. I'm going to go give it another chance. And I regretted wasting my time watching that movie again. So. It just didn't connect with me. It wasn't that deep. Um, Channing Tatum isn't, to me, a world-class actor or anything, so I'm not really surprised by that. But, you know, I don't know. I just, I really didn't enjoy it. Yeah, I think Channing Tatum did, like, three movies this year, and this dog was probably his worst (laughs) of the three. Even though one was like a cameo, even still, he was better in a cameo than he was in that movie. So (laughs) can't blame you on that. Brandon, what about you? Yeah, so coming in at number eight for me is going to have to be Uncharted. Um, (laughs) I I would like I, I didn't go in expecting much from this film to begin with. So going in, just seeing it, just seeing them ruin my love for this video game. Like I still love the games, but like, like I said in the um, in our review for it, the development and the outline was there. They just did not handle the characters properly. So, um, that's my number eight. I can't. Rem- I can't. Even re- I don't even remember what I gave this. Um, let me see what I ranked this. I gave it two stars. Um, and it's funny. Anything after this is, oof. <laughs> So yeah, Uncharted, solid two star movie, and that lands itself at number eight. I think two stars is nice. Yeah, I think that's the appropriate rating for that movie. Um, yeah. So 
this tells you how bad my worst of the year list is because this movie should definitely be higher. <laughs> like, and I am amazed that it's actually only sitting at number eight. <laughs> that's that's how rough the year was for me. Uh, so my number eight is going to be Moonfall. If you're watching this thing, you know by now a huge problem is heading our way. An emergency meeting is being called at our usual place immediately. Free bagels. I've made a shocking discovery. I needed to get me in touch with NASA immediately. Well, NASA and I aren't really on speaking terms these days. Oh, well, that'll change. When you tell them that the moon is out of orbit. An absolutely nonsensical thing. <laughs> no need to Roland Emmerich disaster movie that where the disaster was the fact that it was even made. I mean, it was so, so bad. None of it made any sense. Oh, Moonfall? Yes. Like, none of it made any sense. Yeah, Zach, suck it. It was, it was just, you know, abysmal. The acting was atrocious, which is terrible because I, I love Halle Berry. Patrick Wilson's good. So he, they're all great. This was not it. This was, this was a god awful movie. The, 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 even the action was unsatisfying. The final third act twist is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It just completely ruined the whole concept of the movie. I'm shocked that this is as low on this list as it is because it really should be higher. But number eight is Moonfall for me. I just want to say, I don't think it's a great movie. I wouldn't really watch it. But <laughs> to me personally, if I shut my brain off and just watch it, I think it's fun. So that's all I'm going to say on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying the acting's great. I'm not saying there's anything great about it. But if you just want a mindless movie to just watch for crazy crap to happen, I think, sure, why not? <laughs> but anyways, uh, and going in man. at... <laughs> number seven for me phoenix and brand I, I know not only you guys so many people disagree with me and that's fine but that's okay um coming in at number seven for me is going to be the silent twins oh or, sorry not the silent twins oh. that's coming up but uh beast keep the girls in the car stay in the car okay just stay in the car but I, oh, yeah, but yeah, but okay what's he saying diaboro means devil seen anything like this multiple attacks without eating its prey lions don't do that at least no lion i've ever seen Shh. go back to the calls oh, i still i still have not seen that number seven for me idris elba is so good and the problem is honestly i think this movie the entire story is just crap like, I, I just Elba to me is a good actor. Um, I like his work usually. Um, but this just was not it for him. Uh, it it definitely wasn't his best work. So, yeah, coming in number seven is going to be Beast for me. Yeah, when I saw that trailer, I was kind of shocked that he was making that that movie. It just didn't seem like the movie for someone of his his caliber to be making um yeah i didn't i didn't get around to seeing it but yeah from what i've heard is it was not great <laughs> so coming in number 7 for me it's the okay the next 7 films i should preface this as they are all half stars <laughs> uh, so um any rankings past this you may think oh my god you put this film higher than the other Listen, they're all stinkers and they all needed to go somewhere. So coming <laughs> at number seven was Halloween Ends. Man, man, <laughs> man. They did the bait and switch on this one. They f <laughs> with this one. This one was trash. And like, if you want to listen to our review, go back and listen to our Halloween Ends review. We ripped this movie to shreds more than Jurassic World Dominion. Um, <laughs> just, man, they just, they ruined Michael. They 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 ruined Lori somehow, and just man, I this was the 
big one of the biggest disappointments of this year. It's such a shame because they were going in such a good direction, I felt, with the newer movies. Personally, mm-hmm. for me, I enjoyed the last two. Um, and even if you didn't, I think that they were bearable to watch if you know yes. even if that's not your thing but yeah uh, this yeah. one was just unwatchable like yeah. you could not watch it <laughs> so i agree with you brandon it was it was horrible yeah like for me like i love halloween and i love halloween 1978 2018 kills but now that we know that there isn't any kind of payoff with halloween ends i never want to watch halloween kills again yeah. i will watch 1978 and 2018 yeah, it was a big, massive turd of a trilogy. But uh, we'll get to that. Uh, <laughs> for me, again, I'm still shocked that this one might be number one on both of these guys' lists. But for me, it merely comes in at number seven. <laughs> guys, it's Morbius. <laughs> Dr. Michael Morbius. You've been missing for two months. When you're a stranger. Then you were found on a container ship that washed up off Long Island. Faces look ugly when you're alone. What That's more? not there, but it is low. Yeah. What more needs to be said? I mean, the movie is literally called More BS. Come on. <laughs> like... It was it was written in the stars like is it was all the way bad. Uh, it it had the most laughably bad comic. No, I think I think it does. I think it has. Been, it is considered now the absolute worst post credit scene of all time. <laughs> like like it was that bad. It was so stupid of a movie. It's a vampire movie with no blood. <laughs> like. It's dumb on levels that is is unimaginable. Even like the effects, which looked cool in the trailer, are so overdone and to zero story effect. It's just nothing makes sense. I like again. I think this movie was got crushed in the edit bay or or something. At some stage, it just it did not come out the way they wanted it to, and it was so bad. But and not to mention that they stole a piece of score from yeah. the Dark Knight. <laughs> Just on top of everything else. So, like, yeah, I think this will be on anyone who saw this movie. This will be on their list um, as it should be. This is hands down one of the worst of the year. So, coming back, number six, I kind of spoiled it already, um, but that's going to be... <laughs> Number six is going to be The Silent Twins. Um, I saw previews for this movie, and I was super excited about it. It looked um, like it would be good and kind of reminded me of maybe like a smaller independent like film, and it looked good. And then I saw it, and I just – the whole story was just so messed up. I honestly just – the characters, their motivations, they have mental health issues, and I understand that, but it was just so overdone, and it was a real story, too. It was crazy, and honestly, like, I just, I didn't like the, like, I didn't like the characters. I just didn't, <laughs> and maybe you do, and maybe you would think differently, but it was a crazy movie, and I, I just would never ever want to watch it again yeah that's another one that escaped me i did not get a chance to see that this year but with that ringing endorsement i don't think i'll be checking it out soon brandon what do you got okay so coming at number six for me you're gonna laugh but uh i came up on my recommended free movies on uh, on youtube because i have youtube Uh um or i guess you call it youtube premium now um this movie was so freaking dumb. A Christmas Karen, which is literally just a Christmas Carol, where your main character who gets haunted is a freaking Karen. Brandon, can I just can I just say what went through your head? Like, was what went it, through my what, head what was did they show you in this trailer that said, you know, I never what? saw the trailer. Well, uh, what went through your head to go, you know what? I'm gonna watch this movie. Pure boredom. 
Oh man. Pure and excruciating boredom. Oh. I would have chosen boredom. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, dude, like this this is one of your films that is just chocked full of the typical Karen memes. Let me speak to your manager. No, not the assistant manager. I want the manager. <laughs> I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a permit for this hot chocolate stand? No. All the, all <laughs> literally full of just all the Karen tropes, and it just it was so stupid. <laughs> so yeah, come to number six is a Christmas Karen. So guys, if you're wondering if it's a good idea to watch a YouTube premium movie, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna guess the answer is no. Yeah, okay. don't. Oh man, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. All right. Uh, can't top that. But uh, <laughs> I will say, again, if you listen to our episode on this movie, uh, th- you would think that I would have this movie at number one, uh, which, again, like I said, goes to show how terrible <laughs> the movies are that I saw this year. Uh, but coming in at number six for me is going to be Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, I... I did not like this movie, guys. <laughs> like, like, I can't stress it enough. I did not like this movie. This was the ultimate falling off point for Marvel, in my opinion. You would uh, think it was number one the way we were screaming at each other yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, exactly. It's like, then I saw worse and worse stuff as the year went on. But uh, yeah, this one, I mean, it, nothing about it worked for me. Nothing about it. I, uh, as much as I rag uh, previously on this show about Christian Bale, he was the best part of the movie, and that was still he was still underused. And everything about it, I mean, the jokes were terrible. The characterization of Thor was wasted. Even the action was bad. The the, the visual effects were visual terrible. Visual effects were uh, the, the fact that they're even nom- <laughs> on the short list yeah. they were on the short list of the oscars bro it's, it's ridiculous i don't i don't get it but yeah i nothing about this movie was was good in my opinion um still a mcu fan still still tuning in to to whatever they do but I feel like if you were experiencing if you weren't experiencing superhero fatigue uh before that's the movie that'll do it for you. Uh, definitely. Definitely a waste. She-Hulk is what did it for me this year. Yeah. <laughs> that too. All right. Zach, what do you got? Number five. Oh, number five for me. Coming in number five. Worst movies of the year is going to be Family Cam. Um, Family this, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so this is a movie I saw that was in the AMC app. And I thought, oh, you know, I'll go check it out. <laughs> I go see basically every movie in the app. So why not? And it was playing in the theater. Um, now, listen, guys, I, I go to church. Um, I am Christian personally. Um, this was the worst, cheesiest, Chris, like Christian movie I've ever seen. I want to like almost throw up watching it. It was disgusting. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> I hated every second of it. Um, <laughs> I do not recommend this movie at all, even if you are Christian. It's <laughs> it's just that horrible. Um, I I would never see this again in my life. Um, so I'm gonna say Family Camp, and that's actually starring the mother from Good Luck, Charlie Lee Allen Baker. Oh my mm. God! Wow. Yeah, and it it's just crap. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Man, um, I, I think we're getting into crunch time here as far as my uh my my least favorites of the year. I still so, don't know how Christmas Karen isn't number one. I wanna I really want to <laughs> see where we're going from here because to me, just the title <laughs> like tops it for me. That would be yeah. my number one instantly. <laughs> <laughs> oh we're, no, we're getting there. Um so my number five is Morbius. Um nice. I didn't. Even, I didn't even bother going to the theater to see this. This like this uh, man, like it, it went up on digital. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me finally watch it, and just I was like, what the hell am I watching? I thought there would have been some kind of redeeming quality to it, but there was not. 
the dumbest scene ever is when his friend, when Michael's friend is doing the dance. Oh, man. And he just does that thing with his face. Yeah. And, you know, the funniest thing that came out of the film was people were making jokes of like, oh, yeah, he could just actually do that with his face. Never knows he giant bombed. <laughs> But yeah, man, just even like the end credit scene just led to led to nowhere, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna continue to lead to nowhere. So yeah, Morbius number five. Absolutely, absolutely trash film. Uh all right. So coming in at my number five. Oh god. <laughs> I cannot believe we actually did an episode on this movie. Um whew. Samaritan. Uh, I found him. Samaritan. Samaritan died 25 years ago. That's what they say. You think you live across from a superhero? Do you have a therapist, kid? Kid. Samaritan is dead. I pick up garbage for a living, pal. Samaritan cleaned up the streets. <laughs> You mind your business, don't um, mind mine. <laughs> I don't believe it. Okay. Like, there's bad, and then there's offensive. <laughs> and this, an episode on this? Yeah, me and, me and Brandon did, actually. Oh, um, okay, I must have missed this one. Yeah. yeah. So, so, Samaritan, it was an Amazon Prime original. Um, I, I, For whatever reason, I thought it might be at least somewhat good. It was... It was superhero content i thought like okay maybe there's some new superhero movie out you know we'll check it out who this was offensively bad yeah like <laughs> like between the kid actor oh god we we had some rough kid actors this year this one is the this is the number one the this this kid takes the cake absolutely the the worst of the, of the bunch um this movie was pointless like, Wait, it was... quick quick disclaimer phoenix is not he hate children he does have a daughter so right, right. <laughs> oh hey kids but if she... we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna make a film called the man called phoenix we'll be like listen if she acted the way this kid acted in this movie she wouldn't be mine anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's how i felt about pinocchio exactly like like Jesus, like no, it was it was atrocious. There's one scene in particular that I remember is they're fighting in a burning building, and this kid is not coughing, he's not choking, he's not sni- nothing. He's he's That's literally save he's, me. He's literally yelling as as a building set on fire, like as if there's no fire there. I'm like, okay, stop. Like like I'm like this this, this movie. It 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 left me all types of angry. So number five for me is Samaritan. I'm even upset that I watched it. <laughs> so coming in at number four for me, uh, this honestly we already talked about it, but I really hated it this much. Uh, it's gonna be Halloween Ends. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I I hate it. I mean, they all suck. The every single one I've mentioned, but this one. <laughs> <laughs> just made me so angry when I saw it. And I remember going to Brandon and be like, you know, oh man, I can't see it in IMAX the opening day. And he was after he saw it, he's like, No, don't go see it in IMAX. <laughs> I literally told you to save your money and wait and just watch yeah, it. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't spend money anyways with A-list, but yeah, he was like, Don't don't waste your time seeing it in IMAX. I said, <laughs> Okay, I'll trust you on that. And then the you know, the chat group we're in uh they said the same thing the cinema chat you know that it's horrible so i was like okay i'll wait and i was so disappointed because i had such high hopes for it oh man oh man yeah (laughs) i just it that that is just one giant like the more i think about it the more angrier i get (laughs) but um funny you should mention that as your number five phoenix number four for me is samaritan yeah, <laughs> um, I just I I don't think I've ever seen Sylvester Stallone just so lazy in a movie. Oh my god, and it's just appalling to me. So like I I don't have I don't have any worse to say on it because you covered a lot of it. So yeah, just Samaritan is just it 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 like I said another half star movie. 
Well, this is the point where we're starting to match each other a lot because coming in at my number four is also going to be Halloween ends. <laughs> um, yeah, like I easily, easily just the, what they did with that, the, the, this entire franchise. I mean, talk about starting at a high and just careening down to the absolute pits. Like... <laughs> I, like, I loved Halloween Kills right up until the end, and I think I even said in our review, like, if they retcon that ending, the movie would be would be much better in my eyes. And then we start this movie, and basically what happened in the last one is, is canon. So I'm like, okay, already I'm out. And then it keeps going, and it gets progressively and progressively worse. Character decisions made no sense whatsoever. It was it was just like David Gordon Green had said, this is the movie that we have. Screw logic, screw continuity, screw everything. We're just putting an end to it, no matter how we do it. And they found a way to do it in the most outrageous, nonsensical way possible. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> Zach, what do you got for number three? Number three, uh, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this. Uh-oh. Phoenix, I don't think that you're going to disagree with me, though. Okay. Um, everyone else, though, I think is going to disagree with me. I don't know why this movie was so loved. I don't know why people gave it so much praise. Maybe because it's an A24 film. Um, number three for me is going to be X. Oh. It was complete <laughs> garbage. <laughs> absolute garbage dumpster fire and so many people gave this praise and i watched pearl the movie end up getting better huh how did pearl end up being better pearl was so pearl much was better. like way better <laughs> way way better um there's just so many bad things about this movie the whole pornographic uh interest here in you know leaving your morals at the door like for no reason not there's no reason it's just oh i just i just want to do this and then the whole the horror right (laughs) like an old lady chasing you with a knife or you know touching your skin naked are you kidding me (laughs) it's just like it's disgusting to look at but like also it's not that creative like it's just not and i don't understand the appeal you know maybe there's a lot of people who are going to disagree with me on that that's fine you're entitled to your own opinion but for me number three is going to be x yeah like i said i think the the concept behind that is we we rarely get more than one good horror movie a year and i think people thought that that was going to be it and then it turns out we had the best year in horror ever (laughs) like and so they they jumped they jumped too high too quickly and that that's all x was x was just barely missed my my top 10 just barely missed my honorable mentions it's like bottom 15 for me but yeah it's it's not it's not great <laughs> like there are a ton more horror movies this year that were way better way way better so coming in at number 3 for me is going to be a film called uh, Safe Room. Mm-hmm. It is a Do you premium. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, it's a uh, it's it's a knockoff of the movie Panic Room, which also is just an okay film. Right. But uh, I watched this with my parents. They 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 had they have one of their channels on where they just had like a Hallmark channel or something. Uh, it wasn't a Hallmark movie, but it was like something like the close to the Hallmark channel. And it was about these these people who invade the house and like this kid the, the the mom for some reason has a safe room and the kid has like autism or something like like they're like open the door and the kids like having like, like a spaz attack in the safe room or something it's one of the dumbest things I've ever seen <laughs> oh my god man like oh my god one that like this turned out to be another stinker just. I'm like, let me just sit down and watch it. Just hang out with my parents. I'm like, why are we watching this? <laughs> I'm still wondering how Christmas Karen isn't number one. <laughs> that, I'm that, still, that. I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, <laughs> but like, I heard Christmas Karen. 
and like just the title. <laughs> just that oh does it for me. That would have been. I mean, because the rest of these films end up being w- worse than the Christmas Karen. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even seen this movie, and I'm vouching for it for number one. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> oh. oh man! Oh god! See, okay, there's a reason I have a Christmas Karen above all of these because they made one funny joke, which it was. She's like, <laughs> he said I they made ass- me laugh one time. <laughs> she's like, I want the assistant manager. <sighs> And oh no, no, she's like, I don't want the assistant manager. I want the manager. She's like, he's not here right now. But where's the corporate number? I'm calling corporate. And she's like, we're privately owned. Oh, <laughs> oh so if God. Samaritan or um Safe Room had this show, they would have been they, they would have been yeah, not as bad as they just needed like two they jokes. would have been worse <laughs> or not as they, yeah, they would have been not as bad see, as Christmas. These other films needed some kind of thing to make this better than a Christmas Karen. But okay, none of these, none of these were able to do that. And I'll, I'll wait till you hear the re- my other two. But yeah, number three is safe room. Oh God. Okay. Um, I somehow, I I don't know how, through sheer will, I guess, forced my way to to finish this movie, and I really wish I didn't. <laughs> oh God, I wish I didn't. Um. Still, still only managed to be number three because the other two on this movie made me so physically angry that I still can't talk about them without gritting my teeth. But this one is bottom tier for sure. And that is uh, Blonde. Um, uh, I forgot the director's name. (laughs) But this movie is so unbelievably what's the word um ugly (laughs) like that's the only way i can put it it is so unbelievably ugly and it's downright like vicious and and almost like in a way kind of hates the person that it's depicting um it's so ugly like and nothing about it really endears you to it it doesn't really give you anything to lighten the story like nothing it's it's misery on top of trauma on top of abuse on like for two hours and i think like 39 minutes like it's a ridiculous movie that is just filled with gross disgusting misogynistic violent things that that didn't really even happen to Marilyn Monroe but just exploited and it, it's just ugly there's no other way to put it it's one of the ugliest movies I've ever seen I'm sick to my stomach that I even actually sat through it hands down hands down one of the worst movies of the year I have not even started it because of everything that was said about it but I saw <laughs> yeah, a, tweet, a tweet the other day and it made me so angry. It <laughs> said, "You." Someone tweeted, "You see Elvis to see Baz Luhrmann's Elvis," mm-hmm. and then someone replied, "Yeah, that's why you watch Blonde." Mm-mm. And I go, "Don't you ever <laughs> compare Elvis to Blonde?" <laughs> just based on the things I've heard from that movie, no, like that's just disgusting that someone would even compare the two. No. And um, is anyways, atrocious. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> number two for me. It's another A24 film. Uh, and actually, not many people I feel like have seen this. Uh, it was kind of not really a big theatrical release, and I was so excited to see this because I saw it and I was like, "Oh, this is about comics." And the title of the movie mm. is Funny Pages. <laughs> It is a disgusting, horrendous film with the character motivation in both characters makes zero sense if you watch this movie. It's just disgusting to watch. (laughs) And I didn't get the point of it or what the message. There was no message. And it was a waste of my time. 
Um, I was highly upset with this movie. So number two for me is going to be Funny Pages. So number two for me is going to have to be Moonfall. <laughs> it is finally here. <laughs> and I, I listen, wait, when you hear my number one, like I, I am, I'm just absolutely surprised. I found a film worse than Moonfall this year. But we'll get to that when we get to you know it. what Moonfall. film should have been worse than Moonfall, Brandon? <laughs> Let me guess. A Christmas Karen. <laughs> Hi, sorry to interrupt. This is Phoenix from the future editing this episode. I'm coming in to this point in the episode to mention that we had a little bit of a technical issue at this point, so there was about a 30 minute delay between this moment and the next moments uh, that you hear us talking about our best and worst movies. Uh, so I'm taking this time to just say, if you are listening to this episode and you're thinking, man, these guys are really good. You know what would be great uh, right here in this spot? A little bit of a plug from a sponsor. Yeah, that would be great. So if you are a sponsor or know a sponsor and you're thinking, hmm, I need a new podcast to highlight my product and a couple of great guys who are really funny who can sell my product. Well, look no further than us here at Film Coat. Uh, we have a great group of guys who would love to record a spot for you and talk about your wonderful product. So, if you're interested, let us know. You guys can find us on Twitter and Instagram at Film Code Pod and leave us a message and say, hey, we love your show. Would you like us to be a sponsor of your show? <laughs> of course we would. Thank you so much. So, I'm going to grab the rest of this episode for you guys to listen to it because it gets even better. And thank you so much for tuning in to Film Code. And now, back to the episode. Okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, oh my God. Okay, we had a 30 and a half hour delay. Um, yeah, my number two was Moonfall. So, Phoenix, you're up. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh. So, like I said, my last two films are movies I can't talk about with, with, without gritted teeth. Um, and my number two is one of those movies. It it may be on some people's top list, but I have so much anger and hatred towards this movie. And mainly because I had so much hype built up for it. Like, I was really genuinely excited for this movie. I just knew it was going to be good. Really, really loved. Really, was really pumped for it. And it was by far one of the worst movies I saw all year. And that is Bros. You met a guy? I don't think I'm his type. He's like gay Tom Brady. What are you into? One of these ripped idiots with no opinions? No, I'd like someone who's physically very frail and won't stop talking. And I bet he's as intimidated by you as you are by him. I'm down for whatever. Yeah, I can do whenever and I can do whatever. Cool, whatever, whenever. GIF of Michael Scott dancing. Office GIF? This person isn't gay. I have spent all my years in being. I need you to be honest with me. You like these rowy. <laughs> I knew you put it on there. I hate this movie so, so much. Like, so unbelievably much. I like, we don't have enough time to talk about all the reasons why I dislike this film, but I I I cannot put it into words. It it was insufferable. It was the most insufferable movie I've ever seen. I especially for someone who was so hyped to see it. I was genuinely hyped. I've never experienced this in my life where I was watching a movie and the urge to leave was so strong that my feet started to move before I did. Like, <laughs> like, like literally it got 15 minutes in and I felt my foot go, oh, that's it. That's enough. And like the only reason, the only reason 
that I stayed and watched the whole thing is because I feel that you cannot talk about a movie, be it positively or negatively, if you did not see the whole thing. And therefore, because I sat through that whole this whole movie, I will trash it every chance I get. So it is number two on my list. Worst movie of the year. Phoenix, I would move your hands away from your keyboard because I'd have to disagree. Of what? course you would. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, no, I'm not talking about bros. I never saw oh. it. But oh. <laughs> I don't think you can, you can judge a movie without seeing it. I don't believe you can, or or I, I I believe you can, but I don't believe you should. Christmas, Karen. <laughs> Damn you, Zach! <laughs> I thought Phoenix froze for a second. <laughs> Zach, what is your number one? <laughs> oh, oh god. Okay. So coming in at number one, my worst movie of the year. Um. Also, I. I like, not that people were excited about this movie, but I know some people enjoyed it. Once again, I uh, don't understand why um, the average rating on Letterboxd is three and a half. See a few people I know here who gave it three and a half. Definitely a half star for me. Um, that's going to be the movie Fresh. Let's play a game. Tell me something you don't want me to know. I hate this. Okay. <laughs> Put all our hopes in finding happiness through someone else. Yeah. You are all digmatized and I haven't even seen this dude. What's going on? I'm gonna tell you, but you're gonna freak out. No, this isn't happening. Yeah, it's happening. No games. Know what you wanted? It is by far the worst, most disgusting movie I have seen this year. And here's the thing. Bones and All is also about cannibals. Mm -hmm. This movie is just sick wrong disgusting and i honestly god don't know who would go and watch this i hated it i hated every second of it it was just disturbing but not even where you could like relate to the character it was just bad like i hated it so for me number one is going to be fresh my worst of the year wow all right Brandon. My my worst of the year, which I'm surprised at beating the fall, is they slash them. Right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm guessing that some of you, you're not happy. Maybe you don't fit in. People make fun of you. Well, I can't make you straight, but you give us this week and we might be able to help. Boys cabin over there, girls cabin over there. Uh, I'm so glad I did a group viewing on this with, with a couple friends of mine. Uh, Tyler, shout out to Tyler and Donovan from Cinema Chat. Yeah, we like to make it a little annual thing of just watching shitty movies uh, at least once a year together. Like a couple years ago was Hubie Halloween. <laughs> Can't remember what last year's was. Um, Maybe it was Hubie Halloween last year. I don't even remember when that came out. But um, but this year was they slash them and a slash. It was marketed as a slasher film, which the only the only time the killings happen is in like the last five minutes of the film, and just it, it was just an hour and forty minutes of nonsensical nothing. <laughs> I thought I couldn't find a film worse than Moonfall, and then they slash them came along. Yeah. Uh. Both of your number ones are movies I haven't seen, which is kind of shocking. But I will, I will probably check out Fresh before I check out They Them. <laughs> Do not watch it. Yeah, um, my number one has remained my number one worst movie of the year since I saw it. I'm amazed that nothing was able to top it. But um, it's the movie that honestly made me the angriest for the time that it stole away from me. And that is Jurassic World Dominion. <laughs> <laughs> we can't keep her here forever. If they find her, we're never going to see her again. We got to protect her. That's our job. Humans and dinosaurs can't coexist. We created an ecological disaster. Ellie Sattler. Alan Grant. 
You didn't come out all this way just to catch up now, did you? <laughs> I'm sorry. This movie is the dumbest thing I've ever seen put to film. It is quite possibly the dumbest movie to have ever existed. Um, it wastes bringing back the original cast. They they, they could have done this with any, any people. There was no reason to bring back the original cast. They added nothing to the story. Their presence there, again, just did nothing. The story itself, mind-bogglingly stupid. For a movie about dinosaurs, it's not even about dinosaurs. It's so unbelievably stupid. And then there are moments in it where they, where it, I can't talk about it because I'm going to get angry. <laughs> it is by far my worst movie of the year. I'm, I'm angry that it even exists. Uh, I, 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 I will not be there when they do another one. This, uh, this atrocious thing, throw it in the trash. They, they, they've ruined all the goodwill that they had with this series. So n yeah, Jurassic World Dominion, easily by far the worst thing I saw all year. It is that time to finally move right. on. Right. So we to got to appreciative films. Right. After trashing 10 films, each each of us different. Uh I think the only films that made it the only film that made it on all of our lists was Halloween Ends. That's the only one that made it on all of all three of our lists. Honestly, yeah, but if you guys saw some of the movies I've seen, you we probably would have put it on there as well. Yeah. Would have some of those on there. <laughs> Just and I don't recommend Karen. even trying it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, let's move on to the good stuff. Because this was a good year. This year did feature some crap that we all we all saw. But it was a good year, and there was some good stuff. So, Zach, I'm really, really excited to hear what is your number 10, or do you have any honorable mentions before we get started? Oh, man. The honorable mentions, like they're honestly, I there's so many good movies, so I'm just gonna read them off really quick because they all deserve honorable mentions. Um, The Woman King, mm. The Inspection, Moon Age Daydream, beautiful, beautiful documentary. Nice. Um, I enjoyed The Menu, I love that movie personally. Mm -hmm. I thought it was great. She said, Marcel the Shell Shoes On. Mm. Smile, Barbarian, <clears throat> Cha Cha Real Smooth, RRR, um, The Batman, Argentina 1985, mm. The Whale, The Northman, Till, Rocketry, which is an Indian film about a rocket scientist, beautiful right. movie, uh, Petite Maman, which is a French movie, Phoenix, I know you saw that. Yeah, great film. Um, gorgeous movie. Um, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to stick with that for right now. I think all of those deserve any credit they're given. It was so hard to not have any of those in my top 10, but there are just movies better than it. Um, at the very minimum, those are all four star and above. And there's more too, but those are, there's a lot more, but those are just some I, I couldn't really go without saying. So, <clears throat> that being said, uh, getting into top 10 here, my number 10 is going to be Banshees of Insurance. I know it wasn't for everyone. I absolutely love that movie. I adore that film. Um, I think it deserves to be a number 10. It is such a simple story. And yes, I understand some people say that it is exaggerated, but it is the way that they tell the story is just so interesting and funny and creative. And it's, it's such a simple movie that makes you just like, love it. I don't know how to explain it. I honestly thought I would hate it more when it started. And as I watched it, I just loved it more and more. So yeah. Number 10 for me is Banshees of Insurance. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. And a lot of your, your honorable mentions, uh, I don't want to give it away, but some of them appear on my top 10. So very interesting what you have in the honorable mentions there. Uh, Brandon, what about Man, you? 
so speak, uh, talking about honorable mentions here, just there's so many to list off. Like, I, I feel like I'm going to be doubling up on a couple of these. The Woman King, Elvis. This is going to be unique. Terrifier 2. Mm. That was very well done. Um, the Northman, um, Hustle was really good. Was Massive good. Talent was really funny. Uh, Prey bl- um, blew my expectations away. And it's just, there's there were like, like we talked about all the stinkers this year, but there were a lot of good 2022 films. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's crazy to think for me, just like, this is the first year that a, that a single, that this is the first year that not a single MCU film made it on my top 20 yeah which was surprising to me and like and that's this is coming from somebody who loved wakanda forever yeah but uh, uh coming in agreed. huh also yeah i don't have a single mcu movie in my top 20 either yeah it's, it's surprising yeah but uh coming in at number 10 for me i just saw it la- last week i have no concept of time anymore the i saw devotion Mm. That one was really good. Um, nice. Jonathan Majors and I'm drawing a blank on his name. Uh, Jonathan Majors and yeah, Glenn Powell. They are on screen together. They are fantastic. Um, it's funny because Z- um, Zach was really pulling for this movie because <laughs> like he's like, man, they did what they didn't do in Top Gun. They uh, I don't want to spoil anything right. past that. But um, yeah, Devotion was really well done. It was uh, they had the guts that Top Gun didn't. We'll just put it that <laughs> way. Yeah, and uh, you can talk to me about it if you're listening to this once you see the movie, and I'll explain. <laughs> Brandon and Phoenix already know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why we're yeah. laughing over here. <laughs> but yeah, no, the Devotion though it was really well done. Um, Glenn Powell and Jonathan Majors are great. Jonathan Majors stole the performance this year um as far as just like not performance but he is he's got his career set for the next few years yeah like he's playing this he's playing uh in creed three he's got king the conqueror the next couple years so his career set he's definitely come out swinging since loki i i'm really impressed with his work same all right so devotion nice all right. Um I'm like you guys, I got a ton of honorable mentions. Like Oh my yeah. god, he's got a full paper of it. Yeah, exactly. Like it was a good year. It was a really, really good year. Um, so the honorable mentions I have, uh spoiler alert, which I saw in theaters, fantastic. Triangle of Sadness, awesome movie, Pearl, just barely missed my my top ten. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, fantastic. The Black Phone, uh, another fantastic movie. Smile was awesome. I uh, also have to put in a movie called Emergency. I don't know if you guys ever got around to seeing that. That was really good. Uh, Bones and All was a favorite of mine. Didn't make my top 10, but it was really good. Argentina 1985 also was fantastic. And uh, shout out to Bullet Train. Bullet Train was really satisfying. So I enjoyed that a lot. So those are all my honorable mentions um, for me. Again, 2022 was a really great year. But uh, coming in at number 10 is um, we're going to match here. I'm also going with the Banshees of Inishirin. Colin Sonny Larry. Didn't you? He used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. When you didn't do anything to me, I just don't like you no more. You liked me yesterday. Why does he not want to be friends with you no more? Why is he 12? What the hell's going on with you, me feckin' brother? He's dull, Siobhan. I mean, but he's always been done. Um, Do the night. Two hours. I had this he's movie a little bit higher you. before, but um, talking it through, it's sort of come down a bit, but it's still in my top 10. Uh, I, I love the story. I thought it was very unique. I love the characterization of all of these unique people. This, to me, has the best ensemble of the year between 
Colin Farrell, Bl Brendan Gleeson, Kerry Condon, and Barry Kilgan. Um, I thought it was fantastic. So for me, number 10, Banshees of Inisherin, easily. Shout out to Barry Keegan in this movie. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> adored his character. I thought it was, he was so funny and just he played it so well. I loved Excellent. it. Yeah, he was fantastic. And, you know, it really goes to show, like, even being out of the Eternals franchise, like, he has so much potential for other things as well. And, he, um, he, he's got a lot, he's got his career lined up a little bit too, because he's going to be a Joker in the, in the Robert Pattinson's Batman. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited to see where, where he goes. Yeah. Um, coming in at number nine for me, this is a movie I've seen four or five, six times maybe. I adore this movie. Every person I have shown this movie to <laughs> loves this movie. I watched it yesterday. Wow. I love this movie, and I showed it to um, a couple people. And number nine, I'm happy to say it's been on here for a while in my top ten. That's going to be Vengeance. Mm. Uh, I love that movie. BJ Novak did an incredible job with this movie and i honestly can't get enough and every time i watch it i'm not going to spoil it but for those of you who haven't seen it um there's just things in there that will shock you and take twists and turns in that story that you just don't see coming and the not only is it funny but it's deep like some of the things that they talk about are very deep things and really make you think and i I just love it. So, yeah, my number nine is going to be Vengeance. Nice. Excellent you know, choice. I'm surprised we match here. Number nine for me is also Vengeance. Wow. Um, I, I have a story. Okay. I'm in West Texas, where this family just lost their daughter to an opiate overdose. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's not someone I was close to. But you flew to Texas for it? Uh... Yes, uh, it was a girl I hooked up with a few times. Her family thought that we were more serious than I did. I've heard so much about you. I've, I've heard, yeah. Evelyn just didn't die, she was murdered. What? And the two of us are going to avenge her death. So as like a personal boundary, I don't avenge deaths. But here's what I can do. I'm gonna record everything that you think happened to Evelyn. And we'll put it on a podcast, and we'll see where it leads. What evidence? I watched this for the first murder? time back in September Nothing. on my flight to uh, to story. California, What's and and I I was very satisfied with it. There were a lot of just hard hitting moments, hard hitting like storytelling moments in this that caught me off guard. Um, just the uh, the charger phone joke will forever be one of the funniest jokes in a movie this year. Yeah. Um, but man, like, yeah, vengeance. It it was I. Zach was praising it a lot. He's like, you got to see, it. you got to see it. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let me check this out while I got some time. I little did I know it hit my top ten and stay in my top ten all year. Oh, uh, for the no, for not all year for the past few months. So yeah, number nine for me is vengeance. Nice. Uh, we also did an episode on on vengeance. Um, loved it. Absolutely, I missed loved that it. episode, and I'm so upset. That was yeah. <laughs> that was like <laughs> may not be number one for me, but it was maybe my personal favorite of the year to rewatch. Yeah, it was a really good movie. Um, add that to my honorable mentions because I forgot to forgot to mention that. But yeah, Vengeance was excellent. Um, my number nine though is also sort of a little known film. Um, it didn't get a wide release. It debuted on Hulu, but I've been singing this movie's praises probably as about as much as as Zach has been singing Vengeance's praises uh, for me. And that's uh, good luck to you, Leo Graham. I'm Leo. You must be Nancy. May I come inside? Yes. So I've made a list of things that I'd like to get through. Number one, uh, I perform oral sex on you. Number two, you perform oral sex on me. Number three, we do a 69, if that's what it's still called. Um, four, me on top. Five, doggy style. That all sounds very achievable. Have I booked enough time? You, you want to do it all today? <laughs> yes, no. 
I've never had an orgasm. There are nuns out there with more sexual experience than me. It's embarrassing. Do you want me to brush my teeth? Oh, God. This is crazy. Nancy? It's terrible. It's wrong. Nancy? Yes? Come have a dance at me. Um, this movie stars Emma Thompson and Daryl McCormack. It is a two-hander, you know, um, limited, very few uh, location movies. And it's basically about an older woman who wants to uh, discover her sexuality. So she hires a sex worker, played by Daryl McCormack, to show her things that she never learned. Uh, so it's a it's strangely a coming of age movie, <laughs> but also a movie about you know human sexuality and and the the things that we keep taboo but really shouldn't be. I think it's such a brilliantly done script. I think, you know, Emma Thompson and Daryl McCormack kill it as these two leads. It's sensual. It's beautiful. It's such a romantic movie. I, I loved it so much. So for me, number nine, good luck to you, Leo Grand. Can't recommend it enough. For me, Phoenix, I... I will say for me, that one ended up kind of in the middle for me. But however, I can understand why someone or anyone would rate it really high at the same time. So I, I respect that. Uh, number eight for me is uh, also one of my favorite movies of the year. I talked about this movie a lot, too. Um, and I don't understand people who don't like it as much. But for me, number eight is going to be Elvis, actually. Mm. I was in love with that movie. Austin Butler is just phenomenal. Um, I still think he deserves best actor, personally. Um, I just adore this movie. And I'm not even like a huge Elvis fan. And this movie just spoke to me in so many ways. And the way that they portrayed his life and went through it was just beautiful. So, uh, yeah, number eight for me is going to be Elvis. Nice. Number eight for me is going to have to be Bullet Train. Um, nice. This was a pleasant surprise of just how good of a movie this was going to be. Because when I I remember seeing the trailers for it, and I was like, cool, when is this coming out? I need to go see this. And I finally got to see it when it came out. And man, I, I my expectations were met and just exceeded a good bit. Um, th I think the comedy, the acting, and the, the, the writing... All of it just it worked so well. Little I, I never knew Thomas the Tank Engine would have such a role to play in a movie to make it just so good, man. Orange uh, tan, uh, lemon and tangerine were great. Definitely my favorite characters of the film. But yeah, Bullet Train is coming at number eight for me. Solid. Solid. Uh coming in at number eight for me. It's going to be a movie that I probably love too much, <laughs> if, if it's possible to, to say such a thing. But I saw this movie seven times in theaters. Seven. Seven? Seven times. Oh, I think in, I know what you're going to say. In theaters. Um, I, 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 can't, I can't put it into words. I just loved it so much. So number eight for me is going to be the Batman. Fear is a tool. But when that light hits the sky, it's not just a call. It's a warning. So good. Like, it was so good. Uh, Matt Reeves' The Batman is probably one of my top favorite Batman stories. I I loved Robert Pattinson's uh, portrayal. I, I dug everything about the aesthetic. I loved Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I think this was hands down one of the best, easily the best uh, superhero comic book film of the year. So for me, the Batman takes number eight in my top 10 list. So for me, number seven, um, I know a lot of people might disagree with this. I've heard some people say it's their number one. I get it. <laughs> um, for me, it's just not number one. Um, that doesn't mean I don't love it. I do love the movie. 
Um, but number seven for me is going to be Top Gun Maverick. Um, I just there were there were certain things there there was nitpicks I had with that movie, and everyone knows what those nitpicks are if you listen to our channel. <laughs> um, so for me, yeah, number seven is going to be Top Gun Maverick. Amazing film. It, it was incredible. Um, just for me, it just wasn't number one. Um, sorry, I was yawning. Um, it's twelve fifty one in the morning. Uh, number seven for me, um, actually is the menu. Wow. Um, okay. That's nice. one of those films where the the trailers didn't do much for me, but I was still intrigued to go see it. And this one was, like I said in our in my review, it's a film that makes you hungry, <laughs> makes you lose your appetite, and then make you hungry all over again. I I still have yet to have the perfect cheeseburger after this movie <laughs> and it's a shame because i literally want the cheeseburger that he made in this movie dude but um yeah the menu just symbol s- symbolically i guess that's the word for it mm-hmm. works so well nice all right um well coming in at number seven for me is gonna be a movie that i saw earlier in the year, and I'm still amazed this is in my top 10 because uh, I saw some great stuff afterwards, but this still just stuck with me, and I loved it so, so much. Uh, so number seven for me is The Woman King. An evil is coming that threatens our kingdom, our freedom. But we have a weapon. They are not prepared for. Uh, I loved this movie. Um, Viola Davis, Lashana Lynch, Toso and Bedu, even Sheila and Tim. I thought they all brought it. This was so cool. Like as an action uh, fantasy movie, I thought it was awesome. The action was out- outstanding, like outstanding, and I thought the story around it was really really cool and just really really fun i thought gina prince blywood killed it as a director um so yeah i i had a lot of fun with this one so for me number seven is the woman king so i just want to touch uh real quick the woman king for me was number 11 and the menu for me was uh number 14 so Sweet. Uh, both amazing movies. Yeah, I agree with both of those being on there for top 10. Definitely worthy of it. Um, for me, number six, uh, which I think you, if you've been listening to our podcast or if you're Brandon or Phoenix, you would know what movie I have right above Top Gun Maverick. Uh, <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's going to be Devotion for doing wow. the things that Top Gun couldn't do for me. <laughs> You the only person I ever met belonged in the sky. Just remember you belong down here with us too, okay? <laughs> so, uh, I know no one's probably ever going to agree with that, but that's fine. For me, devotion just made more sense. And so I have devotion here sitting at number six for me. My number six is going to have to be Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. Um... I'm conflicted as far as which is better between the first or the second. Uh, The first one, I I like the characters better in the first. I like the writing better in the second, if that makes sense. But um, I just, I just think Ryan Johnson's an excellent director and writer, writer writer-director. So, I mean, maybe I have a bias towards it. Maybe I have bias because I met him, but um, yeah, no, Glass Onion is number six for me. All right. Uh, number six for me is <laughs> is a movie that I waited specifically to see so that um I could judge it fairly, and I am so freaking glad that I did because <laughs> it made my list. Uh, number six is Babylon. I freaking loved Babylon. Like, why is it so low? Uh, like, cause, cause I got some other stuff above it, but 
Just in a, like just like an erection. Get it up. Yeah. <laughs> or like <laughs> or like everything I have above it. Like actually everything on this list is either four and a half stars or five stars. So like like nothing on here is below four and a half stars. Uh Babylon is is number six. So that tells you how I felt about everything else above it. Um fantastic movie. Like it some for some reason I don't know it's dividing people. There are a lot of people who don't like a lot of things that were done in this movie. I don't, I'm not one of them. I thought this was an insane killer ride of a movie. It does so much cool stuff and it's got a great story. And then on top of all that, it shows respect to singing in the rain, which you you have my vote there. Like so, like I loved it. I I can't speak highly enough of it. But number six for me is Babylon. So coming in at number five for me, um, this movie, um, maybe for some people, can go over their heads. There's so many deep meanings in this movie. Um, and the the comedy in it is not so in your face, but it is hilarious. Um, it also won the Palm Dior this year, so I think it deserves to be at number five. Uh, and that's going to be Triangle of Sadness. Yeah. I... <laughs> I don't want to hear anybody saying no. It's always yes, sir, yes, ma'am. I command you, enjoy the moment. No, no, no. <laughs> what? You say no to me? No, no. Oh, sorry, it's yes. Yeah, no. Yes. Go in. Yes. <laughs> Love this movie. It is so well done. It is so funny. And it just made me want more. Like when it was over, I was like, wait, like that's it? Like, <laughs> no, nah, like I want more. But it was, uh, man, it was phenomenal. Triangle of Sadness and uh, RIP uh, to the actress who starred in it, Charlie Dean. Dean. Yeah. Uh, she sadly passed away this year after getting such an incredible honor for the film she did. Um, and that's that's really sad. Um, so, uh, RIP. Um, this movie definitely deserves to be at number five for me. And I think should be for a lot of people. So that's going to be Triangle of Sadness. Coming at number five for me is The Batman. Um, nice. It's one of those films that like, I knew was going to be amazing. Just Matt Reeves is a great director, but like I didn't know I never knew how just attent to detail he would be. Just between just the editing, the sound design, the freaking sound design, man. The cinematography, the soundtrack. I this deserves so many nominations. It's insane. Like this was a film that I saw twice in theaters. Um and like I wanted to do more, just did not have the time. But um, yeah, I and mean, the Batman is just—it was definitely a—it was definitely a an unsurprise for the year. So yeah, that's my number five. Uh, obviously, you know how I feel about the Batman. <laughs> I mean, just heard but, you gush about it. Yeah, and I absolutely adore Triangle of Sadness. I I love that movie so much. It's moved up in my um, rankings just because of how much like I've grown to appreciate that film a lot more. Um, but coming in at number five for me is a movie that I don't even know how I was convinced to watch this, but somehow I was. And it's a three hour long movie. And I thought, man, I'm not going to make it through this, but Within the first five minutes, I was hooked, and then I just couldn't stop rewatching it because it's so damn catchy. It's it's so exciting, and it's everything. It is RRR. Uh, <laughs> it is RRR is an amazing movie. It's got action, drama, fantasy. It's a musical, so you already know it's a favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's it's everything. And I dug it. The two lead actors are fantastic. The music is fantastic. The direction is fantastic. It's it's one of my favorite movies of the year and it's remained one of my favorite movies of the year. It's it's absolutely awesome. So I hope it sees some love 
come award season uh in particular but our, our definitely for five. international yeah um number four for me um actually kind of took me by surprise i wasn't sure how i feel about this one the first one i thought was great but very basic um so number four for me also a three-hour movie uh it's actually going to be avatar way of water Ooh. um i was thoroughly impressed with it and i thought the deeper meaning behind some of the things that they were hinting towards was incredible um it it really is for me this was a five star movie and everything here up for me i've given five stars so um yeah number four for me is going to be avatar the way of water coming in at number four for me is um i guess you can call it the most overrated film of this year um (laughs) Everything everywhere all at once. That's not me saying it. That's other people calling it this film it. But um, I remember sitting down in the theater, not expecting much from this, and I didn't expect this to get as much love as it did. I just I I saw this as a hey cool a multiverse movie that isn't Marvel. Let me go check this out. It looks very <laughs> interesting, and then it blew up to be the highest rated film on Letterboxd, and it was I it was great. Um. A lot of moments that just had my jaw dropped, <laughs> which which is surprising in a film. Um, but yeah, I, I, there's just so much I love about it. I need to rewatch it soon. I got I I ordered the 4K of it uh, last month and it came in. I just I haven't even unwrapped it yet. I need nice. to watch it soon. Yeah, I want to say um, I forgot to add Avatar: The Way of Water to uh my letterbox so that's why i don't have it on my list but it probably would be on my top 10 because i loved it but i forgot to add it so i'm not gonna add it now but uh yeah this is a fantastic movie uh for me my number four is also gonna be everything everywhere all at once (laughs) um uh yeah uh this movie was amazing it went in places that I didn't think it was possible, like a universe where people have hot dogs for fingers, like, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm like it wasn't, but for me, like, it wasn't just the craziness that happens in this movie, but it was the sincerity and, like, the 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 just the, the beauty of what they're talking about and how to choose love over nihilism and, and all of that stuff, and I just thought is such a strong message. I really dug it. Um, if you wa- like watch our episode on it, I was actually kind of low on it coming out of it. And uh, as time has gone past, it's really grown on me. I really dug it. So for me, number four is everything, everywhere, all at once. All right. So following up with number four for you guys, everything, everywhere, all at once. Number three for me is everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> husband i'm another version of one from another universe i'm here because we need your help very busy today a whole time to help you uh yeah incredible film um you guys have pretty much i mean there's not much i can say about it um a24 has had some real stinkers this year as we heard in my worst movies of the year (laughs) uh this was not that this was fantastic masterpiece i loved uh everything everywhere all at once and if it gets any awards it absolutely deserves it absolutely brandon and coming in at number three for me is top gun maverick um i went to go see this with my dad i think the monday or two no no i think it was the sunday that it opened Mm. and it, it was a great film like everybody was raving about it already and like I need to go see this, but I want to wait to see it with my dad. Um, I, I've i seen the first Top Gun, but I didn't see it up until the time that it came to see Maverick. I saw right. the first Top Gun maybe a week before Maverick. So I was very impressed with it. Um, it I can see it winning a couple things at the Oscars, or at least getting nominated for a couple things at the Oscars. 
Um, Tom Cruise is an absolute madman. Uh, we all seen that based off his damn cliff jump. Uh, and the new Mission Impossible that they showed us behind the scenes for, which is going to be insane. But um, Tom Cruise is a, uh, I I didn't expect to see Tom Cruise as such a, like a high valued actor as I see him now, which is insane for me. But yeah, Top Gun Maverick comes in at number three for sure. Nice. Uh, my next film is one that I actually had a little bit lower, but again, every time I think about it, I just love and appreciate it even more every, every time. It's so good. And that is Tar. You want to dance the mask? You must service the composer. It is so, so, so good. Uh, Todd Field's Tar, uh, starring Kate Blanchett, is a, a searing indictment of power and uh, what people do with their with with unmitigated power. And I think it's just done. It's executed so unbelievably well. I loved everything about it. It's it's creeping up to being one of my favorite films of the year right now it sits at number three but i want this movie to take everything from from everybody i want it to beat i want it to beat rr i want it to beat everything everywhere all at once i want it to beat avatar i love this movie that much i i think it's fantastic and it's probably one of the best movies of the year if not the best <laughs> uh phoenix just i want to touch on that real quick you know i've also seen this movie yes uh i do not agree <laughs> with that but at the same time um i would also say that it is a movie of higher taste too there's a lot of concepts and language user that i don't know that <laughs> an average viewer would understand uh to be honest i didn't understand it um, but I can understand why others might rate it so high if you're able to understand the language that they're using in that movie and the way they're portraying it. But for me, it just it it didn't come close. But everyone's different, and you know that's fine. Um, so number two for me, uh, coming in with a very thin margin to number one is going to be Babylon. Woo! Uh, yeah. So <clears throat> I saw this movie at first and I think I was just tired. <laughs> at first I was like, I don't understand this movie. Um, and I told Brandon in Phoenix, I was like, well, I'm going to give it a rewatch. And I'm so happy I did. Um, I just did that, uh, I think, two days ago now. And I was happy or yesterday. Well, depending on how you look at it. But anyways, <laughs> that's not important. What's important is this movie is phenomenal. Um I can't recommend it enough. There's just so many themes in this movie, especially for movie lovers, that it just hits all the right notes. So for me, number two is going to be Babylon. Number two for me, it like like you just said, it's a very tight game for the last two. Number two for me is going to have to be The Fablemans. Um, I, I'm going to preface this now and say... My top two came in and entirely screwed up my my favorites list of all time. <laughs> Mainly my top five. I don't know how. I don't know why, but it did. But the Fablemans, man, like Steven Spielberg is already one of my favorite directors. Um, him and Damien Chazelle, I think, are t top two. Um, but man, like he came in and he was like, "What if I wrote a movie?" about myself <laughs> and man i i wish i was on the recording for that one i was out of town one of my favorite movies of all time now it's just it's such a grounded film it's fantastic it's written so well it's acted so well the, the actor sam fableman man oh my god he does such a great job <laughs> and just like the scene when he's like like post prom when he's with the bully 
and he's like why did you do this he's like i don't know i wanted to make my film better i don't know i maybe i wanted to make you look like you could fly that scene was so good he's like life's nothing like the movies but hey you got the girl right god what a freaking masterpiece man <laughs> but yeah no fableman's is it, i've already pre-ordered the the 4k version of the 4k physical copy of this and i'm so excited for this just to release on physical so i can just watch it over and over and over respect <laughs> oh i love it okay doke. so my number two because uh this was number one for much of the year and it just recently got beat but uh my number two is top gun maverick everyone here is the best there is who the hell are they going to get to teach us? Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell. I think what Tom Cruise did, that movie is far better than it has any business being. <laughs> like, like, I'll put it like that. Like, it is way better than it has any business being it is exhilarating it is fun it is intense it is by far like it was above and beyond the best movie of the year right up until recently but it is so damn good it is high octane just adrenaline rush nothing will get you as as high as that movie i think the, the effects, what they do in there, the practical effects is amazing. Cinematography is incredible. The action is insane. I just had the most fun I've ever had with a movie this year, and that was Top Gun Maverick. So easily for me, number two, again, just edged out, just edged out a little bit by my number one. But Top Gun Maverick, hands down, one of the best of the year. Well... It looks like it's that time, and yeah. I am so excited to talk about our number ones. I'm sure you guys are also super excited. Yeah. Phoenix, given that you haven't said it yet, I think yours may be the same as mine. Okay. Uh, and Brandon, you've already mentioned mine. So coming in at number one, once again, razor thin margin, but it's going to be The Fablemans. Beautiful mm -hmm. movie. I like I can't even describe how that movie makes me feel <laughs> watching it. There are so many things that happen in that movie, the way that uh, Steven Spielberg is portrayed um, as Sammy Fableman is just phenomenal. Like it's, it's phenomenal. It's touching. It's dark, but also touching at the same time. And I I loved every minute of that movie, and I've rewatched it once now, and it was it's incredible. So for me, number one is going to be the Fablemans. That's a great choice, Zach. <laughs> like, dude, uh, okay, Fablemans and Babylon were very very tight, but my I think what we have here in Hollywood is high art. It's. If you could go anywhere in the whole world, where would you go? I always want to be part of something bigger. Yes. Let's go. Something that lasts, that means something. You know, when I first moved to LA, I got your face touching your lips. You know what signs on all the doors read? No actors or dogs allowed. I changed that. Good morning. Good job for you. I'll do anything. That's the cocksucker they said to screw us. Yeah! Um, that is the next. Okay. Babylon and the Fablemans came in and entirely screwed up my top five. Babylon is my second favorite film of all time now. And the Fablemans is my third favorite film of all time now. Which is insane to me. That two 2022 films back to back just came in and just swoop it up. <laughs> but man... I've seen I've seen Babylon three times now, and okay, this film came out a week ago, as of time we're recording this. I've seen it three times. 
I have the soundtrack playing right now. Nice. <laughs> um, I can't tell you the amount of times I've listened to the soundtrack. I made my own edit of the final uh, yeah. scene of the film. Like not an, not a fan cam or anything. I edited it with my own favorite films of all time. Um, just so much, just so much right with this film, and I can't wait to fully review it with you guys. <laughs> but they handle so much well. Just like even modern day, just like actors dealing with depression, um, actors struggle finding work, actors trying to get their 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 um their character back in check, like like especially Ezra Miller but like just all this stuff man just I'm I'm so disappointed that this more this movie hasn't brought in more of the box office than it has because the 100 million dollar budget and they brought in maybe six or seven million and oh my god it's so it's so sad it is so sad to see but I'm like I'm I'm I literally saw it again tonight, and I'm itching to go see it again already. <laughs> oh, I, I just want to say that conversation. Sorry, really quick. The conversation with Gene Smart as so Eleanor, good. With Jack Conrad and like Brad Pitt being Jack Conrad, like the way that she talks about how <laughs> you know everyone has their time. Uh huh. But right. you know actors live in eternity from people who 50 years from now will rewatch it and feel like they know them oh like the way she says it is just so good <laughs> so incredible so, that's me with singing in the rain man and it just yeah. hit its 70th anniversary and i just rewatched it the other day like i i just i had the the 4k uh physical copy come in the other day uh this earlier today actually but um man just that like you feel like you know gene kelly yeah exactly yeah. you know you, you <laughs> feel like you know gene kelly and you feel like you know debbie reynolds yeah god i love babylon it's so so good but yes zach you are correct it is the fableman's number one movies are dreams That you never forget. Sammy? The lights change how everything looks. It's hard to find our house. Ours is the dark house with no lights. In this family, it's the scientists versus the artists. Sammy's on my team, takes after me. What kind of movie are we gonna make? You dismiss what he does that's playful or imaginative. You could afford to be a little encouraging. She should have been a concert piano player. What she got in her heart is what you got. You can't just love something, you also have to take care of it. It's more important than your hobby. Can you stop calling it a hobby? Mom got a monkey. Why'd you get a monkey? Because I needed a laugh. You always have to be the center of attention. Stop shouting at her! That has been nothing but disrespect from you! I'm your mother! Family, art, <laughs> it'll tear you in two. You stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. I don't know what to do anymore. You do what your heart says you have to. What was your favorite part? Uh, <laughs> it is that scene between Gene Smart and uh, Brad Pitt and Babylon is is almost identical to the scene between 
uh, Judd Hirsch and uh, Gabriel LaBelle in The Fablemans, where he's like, it's just a scene where one character explains the entire theme of this whole movie that we're watching. And it's such a beautiful and impactful scene. And it has so much power and so much merit in it. And both both pe uh, characters, Judd Hirsch and Gene Smart, are in the movie for like a total of five or ten minutes max. And like, but it's such a great and such an important scene. The Fablements to me, I mean, I, I've never connected with a movie about a character that I have nothing in common with as much as I have with The Fablements. Like, I loved this movie <laughs> like two pieces it just spoke to me on a on a deep personal level i loved everything about it i've rewatched it twice i have nothing but love for this movie it's spielberg's it's got to be one of spielberg's top films in my opinion i love everything about it literally everything and um yeah I, I just can't speak highly enough about it. Uh, so for me, The Fablemans, easily, number one. Just edging out Top Gun Maverick, but yeah. I also just want to say another scene from Babylon that I love was a scene, scene where something happens to the main character, uh, Jack Conrad, and mm. he gets so upset. Mm. And he's in the middle of talking to his, I guess, new wife at the time. And they're going over his lines. He's trying to perfect, you know, moving the, the movies, moving into sound. And he talks about how he, he gets upset after this moment and goes, no, what I do is a high form of art, mm -hmm. you know? And he talks about how um, she's just basically doing Broadway and, it's not just about Broadway, but about other art forms and how they can kind of look down on cinematography and the movies. And he's like, but what I do means something to people. It means something to the average person who takes their money and decides to go and watch me. And like that, the way that he said it was just, I, I loved it, which is true. I mean, if you think about it, movies are not for specific like there is no specific group it's for everyone mm -hmm. right and it's just so so incredible that you can all be connected through that absolutely i cannot wait to gush about babylon with you guys a full <laughs> review oh there's so much i want to discuss and talk about man i want like, to point out that we share all three of us share four movies on our list uh on all three of our lists everything everywhere all at once top gun maverick babylon and the fablemans are all on each of our lists as it should yeah <laughs> as it and should. a lot of overlap between a couple of us yeah babylon and the fablemans <laughs> and like i mean yeah as it should man this was a really really good year for movies a really really good year uh, just to recap, so uh, Zach's number one is The Fablemans, number two, Babylon, number three, Everything Everywhere All at Once, number four, Avatar The Way of Water, five, Triangle of Sadness, six, Devotion, seven, Top Gun Maverick, eight, Elvis, nine, Vengeance, and ten, The Banshees of Inna Sharon. Uh, for Brandon, number one, Babylon, number two, The Fablemans, number three, Top Gun Maverick, Four, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Five, The Batman. Six, Glass Onion. Seven, The Menu. Eight, Bullet Train. Nine, Vengeance. And ten, Devotion. And for me, number one, The Fablemans. Number two, Top Gun Maverick. Three, Tar. Four, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Five, RRR. Six, Babylon. Seven, The Woman King. Eight, The Batman. Nine, Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. And ten, The Banshees of Anna Sheeran. I also want to point out I have not seen Women Talking or Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. So one of those might steal a spot here, but right now I'm sticking with my top 10. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. 
the best and the worst from all of us here at Film Code. Thank you for sticking with us. It was a longer process than you'll hear on this episode because <laughs> we had a little bit of a technical issue. But uh, all's well that ends well. Thank you guys for staying up late with me and uh, and going through our best of the year. I thought it was. I think it was. Uh, I think it was awesome. Yeah, of course. Happy to happy to hop on and actually just not have to be on a time restraint tonight. Yeah. So, and if we can all agree on one thing. Christmas Karen is the worst movie of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get up out of here finally. Zach, let everybody know where they can find you. Uh you guys can find me on Twitter at Zach Sneath. That is Z-A-C-H-S-N-E-A-T-H. And you can find me on Letterbox at Z Sneaks. And Brandon, where can everybody find you, sir? Yeah, you guys can find me at F A N T A S M I C Ears over on Letterboxd. Um, thank you guys for listening. It's been a fantastic 2020, 2022 year. Slurring my words here. I'm tired. Um, I'm really excited for all these films to come out next year. We got Indy 5, we, which is my most anticipated. Um, we've got Spider Verse. We've got. Uh, Guardians 3, we've got um, Ant-Man 2, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Um, there's just so much coming out next year, which I'm super excited about. Mission Impossible, man. Yeah. But just, oh my god, we thought this year was good for movies. It's it's good because 2019 was, I still think, the best year for movies. Easily. 2020 bombed because, you know, pandemic. Right. 2021, they were still trying to get back on their feet. So this year they came back and they came back with a punch. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what next year brings. Me too. And yeah, we didn't do our most anticipated, but there's some there's some good stuff. Creed three, John Wick four. Um, it's a bunch of bunch of really good stuff. Killers of the Flower Moon will finally be coming out. So uh, maybe our list will look very interesting uh, in 2023. Can't wait to see what lands on the best and worst uh next year but uh my name is phoenix cloud guys you can find me on twitter at i'm ho reviews one that's the number one and on letterbox under pa cloud and, and as always guys please follow the show on twitter and instagram at film code pod we will see you guys next week we are out of here and and have, have a happy new year have a happy new, yeah, year, happy new year guys peace